So there's a lot we need to talk about and get out there with this weapon. You guys all know that I'm a world baby and I just recently hopped onto the Gen Yu train. Hunting Horn is a weapon that I absolutely love and have loved since the day I first tried it in Monster Hunter World. It's literally the reason why my channel is where it's at right now and I'll forever be grateful for that. I made horn reviews and that opened up opportunities for me to make more videos about other weapons and aspects of the game. For this video I kind of wanted to break it down into a few different sections. Now just in case this video gets watched after the Rise release, I want to make it clear that this is specifically from my experience from the demo, so things very well could change. We'll section off the video as changes I disliked and any concerns I have, next we'll talk about the changes that I love and what I hope to see down the line, and finally, we'll end the video with somewhat of an overview and my final thoughts. If you want the TLDR, I'm still going to happily main the hunting horn and rise. With that being said, let's jump into it. We'll start with the most obvious change and most likely a change most people will suspect I dislike, the song system. In Iceborne and previous installments, the song set operated in a bit of a more complex way. You still had the three note types for each attack, but instead of playing two of the same note in a row, you had various three or four note combinations that you had to line up and then actually play using a recital move. I have to be clear about this. I really, really dislike the two note system and how simplified it has gotten. This isn't at all me trying to be a chad or having some superiority complex, but the process of buffing yourself and your teammates feels a bit too streamlined. You literally don't even have to play songs anymore to apply these buffs, outside of the self-improvement song and the new Magnificent Trio. Now, of course we only have one horn in our hands, so we don't know if this is going to be the template for every horn, but at the very least they could make it so you have to hit a set of notes that aren't the same. But even then the process of buffing feels a bit diluted. My concerns are that we are going to have an extremely less varied list of songs. The brilliant utility songs like Earplugs or All Ailments Negated seem as if they might be a thing of the past, or they might end up getting locked behind the meter used for a follow up spin. I don't want to see cookie cutter song sets with attack up, defense up, then one other song from a list of two or three rotating songs. If this really is the template then we'll only have three songs on each horn, not including self improvement, and the hidden songs. Now there could be some potential to have really cool song effects on these seeing as how you have to build up a meter to play them. And finally we come to the Magnificent Trio. This is kind of like an all melodies extended song or finale if you're a Gen U player. Those songs I mentioned extend the effects from any song currently in effect yours, your palicos, and any fellow duders, while Magnificent Trio plays the songs on your horn simultaneously. This of course is extremely streamlined as well. You just have to have one of each of the three notes lined up in your queue. Order doesn't even matter. It's the same gripe that I have with the rest of the song system, it just feels a bit too streamlined. When you do streamline these different aspects of the weapon, it worries me that you also close the window on the opportunity for unique and varying horns. Right from the jump I have to say that I'm very happy that the spin made its way back, but I can't say that I'm 100% happy about the way it's been implemented. A move introduced in Iceborne, the spin was absolutely vital to the core of the hunting horn and an immensely potent damage dealer. Having this locked behind a gauge feels really restrictive. Like I said, this was a move you would routinely use in your combat loop, whether we're talking about it in the heat of battle or when you have a solid opening, such as the monster being downed. The only barrier to using this was the fact that you had to do it right after a swing. The only barrier to using it was the fact that you had to do it after a swing, but outside of that guideline, you were free to rip it off at any point. The Rise implementation has a little bit of an added effect in the fact that it will play a more powerful song with a hidden effect. In the demo, we get the Song of Raging Flame which gives us a solid attack boost for a short period of time. The trade off here to me seems like it was very much to the detriment of the horn. I would much rather be able to rip this off after any swing and get that sweet damage rather than being restricted to using it only when the gauge is full and getting a short duration buff in return. Another concern that I have with these hidden songs that it plays are that if we do get some of our best utility songs like earplugs and all ailments negated, they'll be walled behind the spin gauge and severely kneecap the unique level of utility we have enjoyed as horn users for so long. 
This one cuts pretty deep when you think about what made the hunting horn the weapon that it was in Iceborne. In the Rise demo, we now have two instances where you can play recitals for buffs. There is the self-improvement cha-cha slide recital we can play right away, which has iframes by the way, and the magnificent trio we can play after queuing up one of each of the three notes. Outside of that, recitals are pretty much gone. The days of queuing up a song and waiting for the perfect opening to simultaneously KO a monster while playing a buff are gone, or at least much different. That control of when to buff, when to throw out the recital feels like something that was integral to the experience of the hunting horn. What has been absolutely lost in the new rework is encores altogether. The closest thing that we have to an encore now is the spin we can do after Magnificent Trio, and that's only if we have our spin gauge filled up at the time of playing it. Encores were a great way to pile on more damage. They were great to use in a tactical sense to close gaps and bring about more KOs. Of all the things lost in the transition, this is one of the ones that stings the most. Encores really fit the identity of the hunting horn as well, because you really had to weigh whether it was worth it to play that song or songs again, and you truly had a huge sense of gratification when it ended up actually paying off. Believe me, this new reworked hunting horn will take some time to get used to, but we'll get there nonetheless. Admittedly, having the Earthshaker Silkbind move makes this sting a little bit less. It's still a bit of a slight because it doesn't feel like it does nearly as much damage as our triple dragon waves or deal nearly as much KO damage as our impact waves. It also felt like we had more control on when we were going to deploy them. The Earthshaker is a two wire bug move, so it takes a little while to be able to do it again. With the wave moves in Iceborne, you could be constantly adding the waves to your queue and you were able to deploy them at any time whether you wanted to take the risk of throwing them out in a small opening or waiting until the monster was downed for some big damage. All you had to do was pull a swing, spin, and a hilt stab, and you were ready to ride the wave again. Something that I think will get overlooked is the wake-up damage. With the Earthshaker, you have a hit that you have to land first, and then you play the wave. So the hit that is going to get the increased damage will be the stab with your wire bug move. With the wave songs, we were able to queue up three of them, play through the queue, and then Encore to do some absolutely sick wake up damage. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea behind Earthshaker and I think it's creative, but I much prefer our Echo Wave songs. Another Iceborne added mechanic I'll miss are the bubbles we could lay on the ground that our other teammates could run through and receive a buff. It's not just the bubble mechanic I'll miss, but I'm slightly concerned that the songs and effects that were unique to the bubbles might not make their way back. These were some really cool and unique effects and very helpful. I know Dual Blade users will miss the max stamina song effect, and Rise Bow users would greatly benefit from having this now that they have the power shots. Speed Boost and Evade Window Plus was a very underrated and fun buff as well. To be fair, most teammates wouldn't run through the bubbles unless you explicitly told them, or unless they played Hunting Horn 2 in some kind of fashion. Now I'm a bit torn on this because I honestly do think that they'll have the bubble system in one way or another, but until we get the full game, a boy can only dream. I can honestly say that even with the changes to the weapon that I'm not so much a fan of, I still had an absolute blast with the weapon. One of the things that kept people from using the horn was the fact that it was a much more slower, methodical type weapon. Now, if you ask most hunting horn mains, they'll tell you that this is the very reason that they love the weapon, and I'm also one of those people. I love the game of chess that you had to play with the monster with every swing, recital, and spin that you committed to. The payoff that you would receive from pulling this off and accurately reading the monster was beyond gratifying. It made you learn a monster's moveset unlike almost any of the other weapons, and honestly it made hunts much easier with other weapons because of the amount of research I would do with a monster's kit. With that being said, I do love the fluid, water-like combo system that they have in this demo that would make even Bruce Lee proud. Every single swing transitions so well, even the ones that weren't really made to. You have combos that can easily be accessed by repeatedly hitting a note, but you can very well chain together hits from different notes with absolute ease and still enjoy that same fluidity. Honestly, I feel like I'm a breakdancer with the amount of rhythm and flow that comes with each swing. Now, with the old hunting horn, you definitely didn't have as much of a combo feel. It felt more like you were piecing together various options dependent on what was going on at the moment. It was much more of a reactive and situational combat. Okay, so the monster's head is going to land here, 
after it finishes this attack, so I'm going to use a neutral Y swing since I'll be on this side of its head. Which, again, I enjoyed very much all throughout World and Iceborne, but that's not to say that we can't enjoy both, even if they are drastically different styles. The Rise demo gives us a much larger window to play aggressively. They've given us a slide recital that seems to either give us iframes or it's just an extremely good way to dodge attacks. Even the Wirebug move gives us super armor so we can build up damage to activate a Wyvern ride. The best part is that these two moves that I just spoke of flow just as seamlessly as any of the other swings you'll be connecting together. Like I said, I loved the horns combat when it was much more chest-like situations, but I definitely had a lot of fun breakdancing to break monster parts as well. And that's not to say that you don't need to be tactical with your move choices in Rise. You still see a great benefit from precisely positioning and knowing what swing to use and what swing to transition to. This is one of the best possible changes that they could have ever made. I cannot tell you how many times, whether I was playing Iceborne or Gen Yu, just how many times I had a song end up being ruined because the only way for you to unsheath without playing a note was by standing completely still. And when you're fighting a gigantic monster, standing still isn't exactly the best move. Time and time again I thought I was good to unsheath, and my character apparently was still slightly moving forward, and that attack up L song I was trying to queue up got ruined by a Y or triangle swing. Now in the Rise demo when we go to swing, we just unsheath our horn instead. This would seem like it's a bit of a setback, or has the potential to be really restricting, but the speed at which your hunter is reactive to the next input of what swing you want to do is great. You can throw the input in immediately after you press the button to unsheath, and you'll be doing your desired swing before you can even blink. Having the ability to do this will help to queue up the Magnificent Trio a lot more often, or if you specifically want to play one of the specific songs for some reason, you'll be able to do so without fear of having your queue messed up from an errant swing when all you wanted to do was unsheath. Now, this is a double-edged sword because while I said earlier that I was worried they might lock some of the more powerful utility songs behind this, it also gives me some hope that they're going to come up with some really creative effects to put behind this mechanic instead. And the mechanic itself is a very cool concept. I like when a weapon has something to work towards. One of the main reasons I like the longsword is because I always feel like I'm constantly working towards something always filling up that spirit gauge, working to get to that next color, and that increased power. Dual blades, you're not specifically working towards filling up the arch demon meter, but it's a huge benefit when you do. Now the horn has a gauge of its own to fill up and benefit from. The Raging Flame song we get in the demo happens to give us a pretty sizable attack boost for a short duration. Something tells me that Capcom will get pretty creative with this. It's an absolute long shot, but I wouldn't mind if these songs were related to the monster's horn you were using. Like, if it was a super aggressive monster like a Tigrex. The horn would give us something like a movement speed increase or Mega Dash Juice-esque buff for your stamina. That would make sense and would be extremely cool. Right off the bat though, I don't know if we can count on that happening, as the Basarius horn giving us attack up doesn't seem like a direct connection. All in all though, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes of this mechanic for sure. This isn't the horn we used to know and that's 100% okay, for me. If you picked up the horn way back and don't click with this rework, that's okay. I'm not going to diss anyone if they drop the weapon altogether. I myself will be embracing this change 100% and still main hunting horn throughout Rise. Once I got the initial shell shock of the song system and the different things that were simplified, I really came around to how the weapon operates now and just how ridiculously fun the moveset is. The slide recital is such a fun way to close gaps and sneak in cheeky hits on the monster that often can lead into a KO or a part break. I promise you, all it will take is you iframing through a roar and smacking the monster in the face and you'll immediately fall in love. I'm going to have so much fun learning some of the best transitions from swing to swing and fully committing to bringing you guys some of the best Duke content possible. I'm beyond hyped to start doing more horn reviews as well. The song system is very much a simplification, I want to be clear on that, but just because that's the case doesn't mean we still can't embrace it and take pride in the power we hold buffing up our teammates. You think people still won't be super excited when they see a hunting horn user in their randoms group? While we lost out on being able to do our typical recitals from Iceborne and other games, 
we did pick up that slide recital and a recital that substantially buffs us and our teammates all in one. These recitals are very powerful and will take time to get used to, but once we master where and when to use them, we'll embrace the change. Along with the other things that we lost, our ability to use the spin on command and echo waves are definitely up there on the list, but we'll still have them in some form. And who knows exactly what else we'll see down the line. While there's quite a bit we've lost in the transition, there's a lot we can look forward to. We've never had this kind of offensive prowess as a hunting horn user and really haven't had the tools to be as aggressive as we can now. The amount of hits you can rack up on a monster opens up a multitude of things. We still don't know all of the motion value numbers or multipliers, but the crazy amount of hits might make status or element a bit interesting. And we're going to have to wait and see if the shock waves are kind of treated similarly to charged shells and shelling with gun lance. New mechanics bring new possibilities and to be honest, I'm very optimistic. I can't even deny that I was a bit sour at the start when I first used the horn, but the more I play it, the more I'm starting to love it. It's true, it's absolutely not the same weapon I fell in love with in World, but that's okay because it gives me a chance to do it all over again in Rise. Capcom was looking to take the least used weapon and shoot it up the charts. Say what you will, feel how you want, but you can't deny they've absolutely done that already. I'll miss the horn from World and truthfully, my dream horn would pretty much be the one from World, but with Rise's combat. But for now, I'll be happy with the horn we have in Rise and I can't wait to dive in in March. I'll tell you another thing I can't wait to do. I can't wait to throw Evade Extender on this bad boy and slide across the map with the new self-improvement recital. You know I had to get the first Rise Evade Extender plug in there. But that's going to be it for this one. I know that there's a lot of hunting horn mains that are going to be upset with these changes and I know there's going to be a lot of people who have never touched the horn that will pick it up and that's okay. Even with that, there's still three things that will never change. I'm still going to main the Mighty Dudes. It's always going to be a fun weapon and Amadeus will still be better than anybody that tries to pick it up. Discord and Patreon links are in the description below if you want to support the channel, and if you like the video, let me know with that thumbs up. Comment down below what your thoughts are on the new horn, and do be civil. As much as it seems like the norm these days, we can very well have differing opinions and still be civil. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Rise, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content, streams, reviews, guides, and more. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.